Okay, right here. Bruce, Steve Futterman from CBS Radio. I wanted to ask you, I wanted to ask you why you think this program has just resonated with so many people. It's, it's, I don't want to say cult-like, but the people who like this show are very, very uh, possessive of it. They, they uh, promote it. They talk about it all the time. Well, I, I think it all comes from the book. The book had exactly the same kind of following. It was written 35 years ago, and it's never been out of print. And I think the same, uh, you know, fascination and people rereading the book and, uh, and you know, begging uh, Margaret Atwood to tell us more about what happened at the end uh, shows that the book has always been kind of, you know, magnetic. The story's been magnetic. And I think, you know, nowadays people are, you know, worried that they live in a society where there are big things happening, the government does things that they can't affect, and certainly you get a little inspiration if you look at a character like Offred who's living under such a terrible, oppressive, you know, horrible situation and yet still finds ways to rebel and ways to live a little bit. Hi, congratulations. Hi, thank you. So um, is there a scene or a moment from this season that you're m most particularly proud of? This moment's pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, there's so much, uh, you know, um, our cast is so astonishing. The director, the directors that we've had, our director of photography. Um, but I would say the, the very first, in the very first episode of the scene, which is called the salvaging, where the, the handmaids uh, tear apart a, a, you know, purported rapist. Um, that scene, I just, uh, it felt like it turned out to be I mean, I had read it in the book, and it was horrifying, and it turned out to be everything I, everything I didn't want it to be and more. I mean, it was so terrible. But um, when you get to the end of your pilot episode, and your main character, who you're supposed to be following for the next 10 episodes, actually kills someone, tears someone apart with their bare hands, and you come out feeling sorry for her, that's a, a scene to be proud of. Bruce, can you talk about, in light of everything that has happened politically in this country, and the, how... How does that influence the way you're going to approach season two? Well, I think that just as it influences the way we approach season one, it's kind of on an unconscious level. I don't think uh, we don't look at the politics of the day and try to bend the story. We really try to follow Offred in Gilead, going through the challenges she's going through. Uh, but I can't, you know, we're a very, you know, plugged in group of writers, actors as well, producers as well. And I don't think you can help but have it affect you. Um, and also, you know, Margaret, in the, when she wrote the novel, everything that happens in the novel uh, happens somewhere in the world to women. Um, and I think that she, um, you know, she, you don't want to make up violence towards women. You could do that all day long, and then it just turns into a horrible pornographic television show. So, unfortunately, uh, we have plenty of uh, examples around the world to draw from. So I think we're certainly engaged in the world and the politics of today in that way. Uh, since it's a 30-year-old book, when was the decision made that uh, a couple of scenes are set in current times and not in like the mid-80s or in the near future? Uh, well, the whole show is set in our time. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I, I just think it, it didn't make sense to kind of have a show like that that takes place in a little bit of a timeless environment in a period piece. that di didn't seem to be any huge advantage. And the book actually took place in the future from the mid 80s when it was written. So instead of, I was always bad at math, so instead of doing all of that, I just decided to set it today. Um, and the stuff that takes place in the past is an alternate past of what's happening now. Um, but it's, uh, I, you know, anytime you can, anything that's real and tangible and we feel like it's part of our real life in a show like this, just makes it scarier. And that's really why. You just want it to be as, as terrifying as possible, and that comes from it being as relatable as possible. Hi. Um, Hi. I just wondered how the series ended up on Hulu and what they brought to the series, if they influenced it at all. Uh, m most, I mean, the, the way it, it got to Hulu before I was involved in the project. Uh, but um, what they brought to it was just incredible bravery. I mean, there, there were so many times when I presented something or pitched something that I was sure they were going to say, there's no way you can do that on television. And they were always enthusiastic and encouraging. Um, and so, and it's not an easy show to make. I mean, it's not, it, it's rough stuff. Um, so they were brave and committed to making the book into a television show. 
uh, and and I also think there's a you know they were as excited about the show because they're a relatively new company in in, in this environment uh, making hour long dramas. Uh, so I think that they that enthusiasm enthusiasm that they brought to it. There's nothing old hat about making drama at Hulu. Um, and, it, and that enthusiasm was really wonderful and I think shows in the, in the show and how, you know, how challenging it is.